What's up everyone? Hey, my name is Brian. I'm a small business owner, a real estate investor, and an avid side hustler. Welcome to my channel and to my porch swing. Have a seat, stay a while. To determine the best business ideas for a small town, I took a couple of things into consideration. Number one, repeat business. With a small population, this is one of the key aspects of running a successful business. Because if people only need your product or service once, you may do great for a period of time, but with every sale, your potential customer base is reduced. And once you've serviced everyone, then you're out of customers. Your business is done. However, don't completely dismiss an idea that doesn't allow for repeat business. I mean, it may not be a long-term business, but if you can make good money in a short period of time, it's probably worth it. And number two, a reasonable startup cost. Small towns often can't support the type of pricing structure that larger communities can. There simply isn't as much money circulating in smaller communities. And because of that, we wanna make sure your startup investment is reasonable based on the amount of revenue that this business can generate. But as a side note, one huge benefit of doing business in a small town, it doesn't cost as much money to operate there. Your rent will be cheaper, your labor will be cheaper, your living expenses will be cheaper. So your revenue numbers may not look as good as your big city counterparts, but they may not have to because your dollars will stretch further. All right, let's jump into what you're here for. Number one, food truck. Food trucks are typically found in the like trendy up and coming urban areas, but don't dismiss the idea for a small town. Small towns are typically limited in their fast food options, and a food truck is a really economical way to get a business up and running. You'll have much less risk and overhead with a food truck versus a brick and mortar location. And some national chain restaurants simply will not build in rural areas, so let's use that to our advantage. But Keep it simple. The fewer menu items you have, the easier the business will be to get started and to operate. So in the beginning, focus on one meal and do it really well. Be the best at it. For example, let's take the good old American favorite, burgers and fries. While you'll need some basic toppings for customers to choose from, all your cooking, burger patties, and french fries. Or if burgers aren't your thing, maybe chicken strips or tacos or quesadillas. Just choose an item that you think will go over well in your community, stick to that, and go for it. And once you're able to run this business in your sleep, if you need to at that point, you can add additional menu items. But if it's working as is, leave it alone. I always like the acronym KISS. Keep it simple stupid. You make good food, make it fast, and price it right, you will build a loyal clientele no doubt. Now, don't forget to check with your community and the health department about permits. You don't want to get in trouble with that. Number two, laundromat. Laundromats do require a brick and mortar location. And for that reason alone, this is likely the least profitable idea in this list. But it's also the most hands-off business in this list. In a rural town, you'll have a good bit of the population that works labor jobs. And that means there'll be some really dirty clothes in your community. Clothes that are so dirty that a lot of people will not want to wash them in their home washing machine. You simply provide a few commercial washer and dryers and you'll have a good business. You should be able to find a small retail building for a fairly cheap rent. And it doesn't have to be a beautifully renovated space, just a clean, well-lit facility with equipment that works. You could even throw some vending machines machines in there to make a few extra bucks. Oh, and maybe you could park your food truck in the parking lot too. Folks could eat while they dry their clothes. Number three, small engine repair shop. If you've ever taken your lawnmower to be serviced, you know that these guys always have a huge waiting list and it can take weeks to get your machine back. If you know a good mechanic or if you are a good mechanic, this could be a great business for you. The average labor charge, at least in my area, is around $60 an hour. So it doesn't take a whole lot of machines to make a pretty decent paycheck. And you could start at your own carport to reduce your overhead if you need to. So if you have the knowledge and tools, this is really a pretty good option for a small town. Most everyone in your area will have small engines that need to be repaired at some point. Number four, scrap metal. Now, I don't mean you personally going out to scavenge for the metal. You could do that if you wanted, but that's not the point. I'm talking about buying the scrap metal from the scavengers for less than you can sell it for at the scrap metal facility. And why would people do that, you ask? Well, if you're in a smaller town, likely the scrap metal facility is a decent drive away from you. So let's assume it's one hour from your town. If someone has 50 pounds of aluminum 
and the scrap metal yard will give them a dollar a pound. I have no idea if that's what they'd actually give you. I'm just using it as an example. But so we'll just say that they would pay one dollar for every pound of aluminum and someone has 50 pounds. It's not worth it for that person to drive two hours for $50 worth of scrap aluminum. But if they could come to you in 10 minutes and get 50 cents a pound, well, they don't have to drive two hours. You get to buy it at 50 cents and you can sell it for a dollar. All you have to do is throw it on your trailer and hang on to it until you have enough to make the trip worth it. So now you've saved your customer from having to drive two hours for 50 bucks and you get to make a little money off of it too. It's a win-win situation. And the best businesses are symbiotic transactions. When everyone wins, everyone is happy. And when everyone is happy, a business will flourish. Number five, a welding or metal fabrication shop. There are a number of things that can be done with this type of business. Your particular offering will be heavily influenced by your knowledge, skills, ability, and the tools that you have on hand. In a rural community, people tend to use more machinery and equipment that needs to be either repaired or altered for their needs. And it's often substantially less expensive to repair than it is to replace. If you're in a farming community, Farming equipment is put under a lot of stress and parts break. Very few people have the knowledge or the skill to do metalworking themselves. So competition will be low. You could also get into building or fabricating custom things like deer stands or tables or stair rails, utility trailers, you name it. The only limitation is your skill set and the equipment you have on hand. When you really start thinking about it, the opportunities for metalworking, they're almost endless. Number six, heavy equipment operator. Are you familiar with heavy equipment like dozers or excavators or even smaller machines like tractors. If so, you could do dirt work or land clearing. In rural areas, there are always people that are looking to have their gravel driveways repaired or a home site prepared, a cutover cleared for pasture land or to build a pond. Now this may seem like a really expensive venture to get into because of the cost of the heavy machinery, but you can always rent it. And as long as you account for the cost of the renting in your price, you'll be totally fine with that. As business picks up, you could buy your own equipment if you needed to, or maybe you just keep renting it. That's something that you would have to determine once your business really takes off and you see what the needs are. Number seven, an online business. Okay, so small towns do have a small population. Thankfully, we have the internet, which gives us access to everyone on the planet nearly. So if you have skills to do things like make custom jewelry or make leather wallets or wooden bowls or anything that you could make that you can sell online through either Etsy or eBay. Maybe you could start a blog or a, a YouTube channel. Country life tends to do really well on YouTube, especially when you can show something unique about your country life. Maybe you're an organic watermelon farmer. As silly as it sounds, there is an audience out there for you. There's an audience for everyone. All you have to do is shoot some videos, figure out how to edit them in a way that they're halfway interesting, and post it on YouTube. Eventually, you will find your audience. And let me tell you, I'm learning from experience. The YouTube paychecks, they're pretty good. They're a lot better than I expected. And you see, my channel's not that big. At the time of recording this, I have just over 2,000 subscribers. In my first week monetized, I made $800. Online opportunities really are endless. This video is not touching anywhere near all of the ideas out there that exist. So if that's something that does interest you, don't stop with my video. Keep looking. There are so many ideas and there's so many good videos out there that can walk you through step by step how to do it. Just be careful. Don't fall for those guru guys that want you to pay them a whole bunch of money to learn how to do whatever it is they want to teach you how to do. Just don't fall for those guys. If they ask you for money, just walk away. Now, there are some courses out there that probably are worth the money, but there are also a lot of shady people out there too. So just, just be careful. Make sure you do your homework before you give somebody money. Guys, making money really is not that hard. All it takes is a good idea, smart work, and a positive mindset. Mindset is everything. People with a negative mindset will always struggle with their finances. Those are the people in the comments section down below that list out every excuse under the sun why the ideas in this video won't work. Go look, they're there, I promise you. If this video gets a decent number of views and comments, you'll see what I'm talking about. There will always be the negative Nancy out there to tell you 
it won't work, it can't work, you can't do it. Those people just exist, and I truly don't know why. I don't understand why people have that attitude, but they do. And like Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So if you're the person down in the comments below saying, this idea is dumb, you can't make money doing this, you're right. You can't make money doing this. Money is everywhere out there and people are always looking to spend it. So keep your attitude right and go figure out what value you can offer other people in exchange for money. People are not going to give you money for nothing you have to find a way to create value for people. Money is not scarce, it's everywhere, it's all around you. And you have to keep in mind that money has a different value for everyone. While $1,000 might be life-changing to you, there are people out there that could drop $1 million on the street and not even bother to bend over and pick it up because it's not worth their time. And I'm serious, those people do exist. And people that have money will pay whatever they need to pay to get the things that they want or need. You just have to figure out what those things are. And speaking of attitude towards money, if that's something that you need help with, watch this video right here. Seriously, this video will help you get your mind right. guys. Thank you for your time, I sincerely appreciate it. And if you like this video, please take a moment to like this video. And also while you're down there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell, and that way YouTube will let you know when I post my next one. Thanks for watching until the end, and I'll see you in the next one, bye.